Welcome back to Brashonomics here on our, our Monday real estate show. And, you know, we talk a lot about the most desirable places to live, and certainly North Seattle tends to continue to be one of them, whether it's for the family, trying to get people in for the holidays. or I guess it's kind of a, a multitude of types of buyers in, in, when you get into that area. Uh, Dan Yella Dombrowski joins us, an experienced broker with John L. Scott, and one half of the Key 2 real estate team. Uh, welcome, Daniela. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me on the show, Ben. Well, well thanks. For, I'm, I'm glad you could come. And, um, you know, we were just talking a little bit about that, that the market and what's going on kind of as a whole. Mm -hmm. And the Wallingford and, and that North Seattle, that Green Lake area that you kind of you specialize in, right. seems to be a, a hotbed of what goes on throughout the rest of the area. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. We've been very fortunate in that area that, you know, the downturn certainly hasn't hit us as, as much as in, in other areas. You know, we've been fairly sheltered as far as foreclosures, short sales, et cetera. And, you know, you talking about family, you know, I think that is our primary market demographic because one thing that has happened over the last few years is that um, in Wallingford, Green Lake, uh, they've been very, uh, they're very pe popular elementary schools. You have uh, John Stanford International and now McDonald International schools that are Japanese and, and uh, Spanish immersion schools. And so the draw for young families into those areas is just enormous. I mean, there's other factors, of course, you know, easy access to I-5, 299, even in, you know, east side commute, obviously parks, walkability. I mean, we have a home on the market right now with a walk score of 100, you really? know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's definitely very, very popular. Um, but it's also an interesting um, kind of conundrum that we're dealing with, especially with regards to families, because they want to be in that area. But historically, you know, the Wallingford Green Lake areas, they were the working class neighborhoods. So what do we have? There is housing stock, you know, from the early 1900s are the old world charm, you know, bungalows, right? Small houses, two bedrooms on one level. Well, really hard to adjust that for, you know, contemporary family living because, you know, they'd love to have the suburban home with at least three bedrooms on one level, uh, a big yard, you know, family rooms, open layout. Five-piece bathroom, oh, yeah, place for the been, dog. Uh, exactly. Two-car garage, right? Well, we don't have a whole lot of that in Baltimore. How about street we, parking in a shared bathroom? Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. Exactly. <laughs> so it can be really challenging, you know, to find uh, those kind of homes. And when they come up, you know, you, you, when that layout comes up, it, the condition doesn't even really matter. Uh, the, you know, there's a huge draw. I mean, we've there was just a home in Wallingford listed for 1.1 million. I had exactly those characteristics. Well, there were four offers on it, and I don't even know how much it's it's been driven up. And so we see, you know, multiple offers really across the price ranges. Uh, you know, if we're talking, my business partner, Chris, today is in one in the 400s in Finney Ridge. I was in the 800s yesterday, you know, in Magnolia. Um, so we really, you know, see it across the price ranges for the right, right homes. Well, you talk about it being competitive in, you know, in the million plus range. Is it competitive across all ranges? Uh, definitely what I've seen. I mean, what you might find is that, okay, so in the four five hundreds, maybe you only have five offers, but, you know, and you get into Only the, five. Only huh? five, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only four pre-inspections, yeah, sure. you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then you get a little bit higher. Well, maybe you only have two or three offers, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's competitive through throughout the price ranges from what I'm seeing. About one-third of our transactions on both sellers and, and buyer side have been multiple offers this year. And so prices really have gone up. So what are ways that people can get into these areas? I mean, some people, you know, mm -hmm. you might drive by a house. I know the, uh, the uh, there's houses that I think about where you drive by <laughs> and, you know, usually if it's on a boat, there's about a hundred of them I could choose. But you drive by and you're like, man, that's the house I want. Yeah. This That's the house. And it never goes up for sale. Yeah. Or at least, you know, or maybe it does. I, how, what are some ways that people can maybe get into the house that isn't for sale and maybe avoid all of the competitiveness of what's going on? Yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, and actually, we have seen quite a number of off-market sales. Uh, and that is exactly what you're talking about. So often we're approached by sellers now that, you know, just put it out there. Hey, you know, we're planning to sell. If you have a buyer, you know, why don't you 
bring them along and let's let's start talking. And there can be really benefit for both sides. You know, as you pointed out, it might not be as competitive for the buyer, which of course is nice. And for the seller too, there can be advantages. They might not have to go, you know, through months of preparing the home for sale and, you know, getting it staged. And, you know, if you have young children, especially, you know, it can be really tough to have your home on the market. And during those nap times, um, so you don't have masses of people coming through your home, et cetera, et cetera. So it actually can make for a much more relaxed uh, experience for both buyers and sellers. And we've had quite a few and are actually working on a few others right now. Um, how does that work? I mean, mm-hmm. I, if somebody wants, I mean, let's say mm-hmm. I found the perfect house and I was said, Daniela, I, I want that house. Mm-hmm. How do you, how does that work? How do you, do you just go knock on the door and go, hey, I got a buyer? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not quite like that. I mean, it's usually sellers we know that, you know, have the intention of selling. Uh, and of course, we have a big buyer pool in the area. And so, you know, we pretty much match those people just without it being listed on the, on the MLS. Yeah. Rather than, you know, knocking during nap time, waking the kid up going, hey. Yeah, try. Not so much, not so much. <laughs> also, we have close relationships with other agents in the area, um, and so often, you know, we'll we'll become aware of a of a sale coming up, uh, you know, beforehand. And so sometimes we can put that together ahead of time. It sounds mm-hmm. like it is would be less stressful. Uh, we are here with Daniela Dombrowski, and Daniela. So there's also I want to switch gears a little bit because you mentioned this green canopy, mm-hmm. and what does that mean? So Green Canopy is a very innovative builder that we've started to work with over the last year, which is really exciting because really where they come in is exactly the problem that I talked about earlier, right? That housing stock just not being what our buyers are looking for. And so what they do is um, they take those old drafty fixers, you know, and not only make them shiny and new and bright, you know, but really with an eye towards energy efficiency. So that's the main thing. So what they do is when they go in, they take a an independent energy score. It's called EPS. It's kind of like a miles per hour, you know, that everybody knows for a car. But you know, what? How much does it operate to, to um, take to operate your house? You know, people don't really ask that, right? So the EPS score really tries to determine that. So they go in, they determine that score before they go in, and then once the retrofit is done, they take another. Uh, you know, EPS score. And most of the time, you know, the, the essentially the, the, the energy efficiency of the home increases by about 75%. How do you get an EPS score? Like, can I get one on my house? Yeah. In fact, I'd highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you do it? Do you... It's, um, it's called an independent uh, energy audit. And you can actually go uh, to, I think it's on the City of Seattle website. Mm-hmm. And the City of Seattle actually supports it. So usually it's about, I think, $400 to have it done. I think now the city supports it. You get it done for $95. So you have this energy auditor come into your home, and they do what's called a, a blower door test. You know, they close everything, and then they blow all this air into the house. And you see where the air comes out. So that's the first thing, determining, you know, the air leaks in your home. Then they have these infrared, you know, tools, I don't know exactly what it's called, but um, where you can see how much insulation you have in your walls and your attic. And so they can really help you to determine, you know, where you get the biggest bang for the buck in terms of, uh, you know, making your home more energy efficient. It starts with air sealing, which is really, you know, one of the lowest hanging fruit as far as the cost goes, then increasing insulation. Uh, and only then, actually, the third step is, is double pane windows, because that's always the first thing that people look at, right? And that's the most expensive thing to do. Uh, but yeah, there's really you seal up the air holes. You just need some duct tape and know where they are, right? And call it a day. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> that, <little> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there actually there's a lot of incentives and rebates. Um, you know, I mean, federal, state, and city. So, yeah, definitely something worth doing. We just have a couple of minutes left. Sure. Um, but so, how do how do they go about doing it? How does Green Canopy go about improving the EPS? Yeah, so kind of what I just talked about, actually. First thing is, you know, to really make that really tight building envelope, seal those, you know, air air leaks, um, really ramp up that insulation with high R value, you know, throughout, you know, the walls and, and the attic space. Then, of course, high quality windows. Um, and then the other part, of course, is, that, you know, it's a green builder, so you, they use uh, green sustainables, recycled materials, um, and open up the house and really make it nice and and modern. It's been really, really well received in the marketplace. I would bet, you know, we, we it's kind of that gives you the, the turnkey aspect along with something that is green. Yeah, it's and very, also... It's very yuppie Seattle. Very, very, definitely, yeah. 
and uh, it does preserve, you know, the the original uh, architecture of the home as much as possible as well. So you get kind of the best of, of both worlds. Well, Daniela, thanks so much for joining us. Do appreciate it again. Daniela Dombrowski with John L. Scott. When we come back, a good friend of our show and mine, Ryan Leopold, will join us. We will discuss a little bit on the mortgage side. What's going on? How lower rates? Could they go lower? You'll find out. We'll be back. <laughs> 